If you are ever in and around Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, or even nearby Knoxville, Tennessee, and you have never made a visit to Dollywood, then I recommend you get to it. If nothing else, the cinnamon bread, good music, chill, southern vibes, and delicious fried chicken is all worth the visit alone. But if you're a rail fan, then it's worth the visit to see and take a ride on their fabulous steaming sister trains, Cinderella and Klondike Katie. Of the two, my particular favorite is probably Engine 192 Klondike Katie, which was doing the work on our most recent visit to Dollywood over the weekend. The Dollywood Express leaves promptly at the top of each hour during the day at Dollywood. It has five passenger cars and it seats approximately 600 people each trip up and down the mountain of Dollywood. Before the trip, Engineer Julie and Fireman Brad have a lot of work to do before and after each trip. While a coal car should suffice Fireman Brad to shovel coal throughout the day once replenished, it takes a lot of water for the steam engines to operate efficiently throughout the entire day. Every day, the Dollywood train uses 2 tons of coal and 4,000 gallons of water in order to make its continuous journeys throughout the day and into the night. That's why the train has to come to a complete stop at the same spot after each trip so that it can line up with the water tower to take in all that it needs each time. The entire train journey takes just about 20 minutes to complete the run, traveling up and down a single curving main line on 36 inch gauge tracks that goes up to the top of the mountain where it makes a loop with a switch that activates and changes position for the track before and after each time it clears the loop, where it returns back down and makes another loop around Dollywood's county fair area before arriving back in the station. Now we're going to take you on a journey today with Klondike Katie from August 17th, 2024 on the 7 o'clock p.m. edition of the train ride. We'll share some unique pieces of history about Klondike Katie along the way and we'll take in some amazing views. Now when engineer Julie gives two quick blasts of the whistle, that means we've received the all clear from Depot Master Sharina and we are clear to the park. Those two whistles you just heard tell us that our engineer has received all clear and we will be pulling out of the depot at any moment. As we get ready to depart, let me remind you of a couple of the safety rules you will need to know for our trip today. Please remember to remain seated at all times. This does include small children as they are not permitted to stand on your lap, on the seat, or on the floor. If you have small children in your group, please have them sit in the center portion of your seat with an adult on the outside edges. Also, remember to keep all body parts inside the car at all times, and the use of tobacco products is not permitted during our trip. Thank you. As the train first pulls out, it immediately takes a lot of force and effort from the wheels of Klondike Katie as this trip goes upgrade in no time. But this is no big deal for Klondike Katie. Built as a USATC S118 Class 282 Mikado in April of 1943 by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, she's handled much worse conditions back in her day. Initially built for the US Army where she went to Alaska and worked on the White Pass and Yukon Railroad helping deliver tools and supplies to build the Alcan Military Highway. So fun fact, this train is a World War II veteran. The S-118s were not particularly well suited to the mountainous terrain of the White Pass due to their boilers being higher, but the White Pass was ultimately desperate for locomotives at the time, so she had to suffice. Following the war, the engine alongside two of her sisters, 190 and 196, 
were sold to the White Pass for regular service for $15,000 in order to compensate for White Pass engines that had been retired during the war. At some point during the 1950s, 192 would be converted from a coal burner to an oil burner, but the exact date of that conversion is unknown to rail historians. But of course, today she's back to burning coal on this Tennessee mountainous railway. Uh -huh. During her last few years of revenue service, 192 worked as a switcher until her retirement in 1960. And in 1961, the founder of Tweetsie Railroad, Grover Robbins Jr., purchased number 192 and sent her to work at his second theme park called Rebel Railroad, a Civil War theme park which opened the same year. It was here that 192 was given a nickname Klondike Katie. However, once in operation at Rebel Railroad, the name seemingly went unused with the engine bearing the name Rebel on the side. In 1966, Robbins changed the name of the park to Gold Rush Junction and the park's theme changed to a Wild West theme similar to Tweetsie during the Gold Rush Junction period. After this move, the locomotive was repainted into a Tweetsie inspired paint job of green, red, and gold trim and the engine would officially bear the Klondike Katie name for the first time. In 1970, Art Modell, the owner of the NFL football team, the Cleveland Browns, bought the park but retained the Gold Rush Junction name. In 1976, Jack and Peter Hershend, owners of Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri, bought the park and after operating it for a single year as simply Gold Rush, they would rename the park as Silver Dollar City, Tennessee the following year. 192 would be repainted back to black and the locomotive would be given yet another new name, Daddy Bryson, after an engineer on the Little River Railroad. In 1986, Hershen would make a deal with country music megastar Dolly Parton and the park would officially dare be known as Dollywood to which it still stands today and likely will for a long time. Upon the creation of Dollywood, Engine 192 would once again don the name Klondike Katie which she has remained that way ever since. There's a lot to love about Klondike Katie. There's also a lot to love and know about Cinderella as well. But because of the vast, lengthy history that she has for this particular spot and theme park, being the older sister, if you will, she is forever my personal favorite, and I'm glad she was working for us this day. Now as engineer Julie continues to get us back up the mountain, we reach the top of the route in what is likely most people's favorite spot where a train takes the big curve, allowing everyone a good view of the locomotive working where with the single command by the conductor, the crowd instructs engineer Julie to blow the whistle, to which we are all treated to the joyous sound of this Mikado lets loose one more time. Now the train ride has changed a lot since I was a kid. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, you could even take rides in the cab of the locomotive on the special seats on the coal tender. I was fortunate enough to do this at least one time as a kid, and also a memory from way back when, in that big green loop, as most know it today, the train would come to a stop as actors performed a robbery and hijacking scene that was full of comedy and good times, often resulting in a conductor of the train shooting the bad guys, or at least that's how I remember it. They stopped doing this skit back in the early 2000s, but it was always something that I enjoyed and miss as just a little piece to break up the train ride. Now one thing that's very cool about Dollywood, much like other parks such as Disney World, they've incorporated some nighttime entertainment into the day. 
as a team of drone technicians and operators work with pyro crews to put on a nighttime drone and fireworks display that can be seen from Dollywood's Wildwood Grove area, which is one of the first places you see as the train comes back into the park area, where, if you look over to the left, you can see the drone team prepping for the nightly show. And after a quick trip around a curb, you can see their world-famous wooden roller coaster, Thunderhead, named after those monstrous loud Thunderhead clouds we see from a distance in Tennessee. Look, here's some brave souls going up now. From there, it's not much further until we reach the other parts of the park as you can enjoy a few more curbside views along the train's path depending on where you sit. And as we come in, you truly get to see all that the park has to offer its visitors, giving yet another howdy to the friendly town folks of Dollywood. Howdy! Now one thing that is cool to see when a train passes on the back side of the county fair, you can get a good glimpse of the Dollywood Railroad's maintenance facility where Cinderella is housed right now as they use each locomotive every other year. During each locomotive's year-long break, the maintenance team performs any necessary tasks and repaints each engine to keep a fresh coat of black paint each year. And with that, that's all from me for this virtual journey with Klondike Katie. Now make sure you get to Tennessee sometime soon to take your own journey of Klondike Katie or Cinderella at Dollywood. It's a train that rail fans of all ages can enjoy. So until next time, thanks for watching this video. Leave a like and subscribe to my channel so that you can see even more train videos right here on Danny B Trains. Until next time, have a great day. Bye guys.